general relativity step by step. We've got this rather nice formula, Rn equals R times A of T, where this is the distance, distance now, which means at time T, I guess. This thing here is a co-moving distance. So R equals constant for any galaxy. Any galaxy at rest, I guess. Again, in scare quotes, because the, the whole difficulty of general relativity is to cope with the fact that space is not flat. And if space is expanding according to the Hubble expansion term here, that's Hubble, we've got to hold two separate concepts in our head. Firstly, a particular galaxy may be receding, and secondly, it's at rest. And the reason it's at rest is that we are at rest, or we can take ourselves to be at rest, and all observers are equivalent. So we've got this, we've got these two very, um, two very different ways of viewing a galaxy. What I want from a coordinate system is for it to be obvious, I want the coordinate system to exploit the fact that all my observers are at rest. And the coordinates that we use should make it obvious that things which are at rest are at rest. And that means I can't use that. That's a disallowed. It's not really disallowed, but it's it's a it's a non-optimal or a sub-optimal coordinate to use because galaxies that are at rest are receding, and if they're receding, that means that R n is increasing, and so we've got that makes life difficult for us because we've got galaxies at rest having a changing R, a changing R n, but this coordinate works because at rest at rest in quotes, equals constant r. So this is a good coordinate to use because r is constant shows that the object we're considering is at rest. And we've got the Hubble constant as well, which is an unavoidable, an unavoidable feature of, these, um, of this coordinate system. OK, so I've got my coordinates here that I want to use. I want to use r and a rather than r n. Um, but now what I want to do is to define a metric. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that ds squared equals, um, I'm just going to put a question mark here, dt squared, I'll fill that in in a moment, plus the spatial component. Now what I want is to use spherically symmetric coordinates because I'm exploiting the homogeneity and the isotropy of the universe. So I've got drn squared plus... Let me just write it down. Rn squared uh, d theta squared plus sine squared theta d phi squared. So there is my, or a, a candidate metric for the universe, which is clearly spherically symmetric. So what I'm doing is I'm explo exploiting that spherical symmetry in my choice of coordinates here. However, I've still got a little bit of degrees of freedom to play with. I can multiply it here by some function of f of rn. And that's just some function, which, and this function here is a quantification of the non-flatness of space. So what I'm doing here with this function f I'm allowing my coordinates, or I'm, I'm setting up my coordinates so that they have spherical symmetry, but I'm not necessarily imposing, um, I'm not necessarily imposing flatness of space. So of course, if f of r n equals one, that tells me that I've got a flat space. Flat space. Um, okay. Now, this question mark I've got here, that's easy to deal with. I'm just going to put a minus one there. Why is that? That's because I'm defining time to be proper time by any observer. So just if you are sitting at a particular position and your r and theta and phi are not changing, then ds squared will be minus dt squared by definition. So that's an easy term there. However, we've still got a defect here that objects at rest are not really 
uh, or it's difficult to detect, or this coordinate system is not exploiting the fact that objects at rest uh, have got. It's not easy to tell if an object has rest is at rest with this coordinate system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute for r n, and we know that that's equal to r times a of t. So I'm just going to substitute that in here. So now what have I got left? I've got ds squared equals minus dt squared plus a of t, the Hubble expansion term, squared dr squared plus uh, a of t squared. I'm just going to rearrange it a little bit. d theta squared plus sine squared theta d phi squared times r n f of r n pinch in a little tiny bit here uh, and now i'm going to rewrite the final term so it's minus dt squared plus a of t squared dr squared plus a of t squared times i'm just going to call it q of r what this q of r, well, let me put the other term in as well, d theta squared plus sine squared theta d phi, and we have space, uh, d phi squared. Let me just zoom in on this. And all I've done here, this isn't clever, all I've done is taken these terms here and whack them in there. Uh, actually, I've got some squares missing. There's a squared missing from there, and that should be q of r squared. And this is absolutely conventional. So we've got two functions here which are unknown, and that's ds squared. So we've got a of t is an unknown, we'll see if we can pin it down later, an, an unknown Hubble expansion term. Hubble expansion term. And q of r is an as yet unknown a non-flatness term. And the way I've set it is that Q of R equals R corresponds to flat space. Because if Q of R equals R, we've just got a regular spherically spherical symmetry. We've got flat space, and so volumes work as you think they do, and Pythagoras' theorem works, and everything's nice. I'm going to write that out again and talk about it a little bit more. We've got, I'm going to pinch in a little bit. We've got ds squared equals minus dt squared plus a of t squared. We may as well factorize it a little bit, I guess. Uh, and that's dr squared plus q of r squared times your, um, your angular terms, d theta squared, I guess there should be a bracket there, plus sine squared theta d phi squared. And what I'm going to do is to try and find a of t and q of r. Well, I need a bit more information. Um, all I've done is set up a coordinate system here. What I need to do now is to solve the Einstein field equations for a of t and q of r and see what happens. I'm going to need some extra physics information as well. But the rest of this, um, well, the next next several dozen screencasts are going to be trying to pin down what a of t is and what q of r is. They've got nice physical explanations, but I'm going to pin down what they mean in subsequent screencasts. I'm going to stop there. This is a nice trial metric. Okay, it's an interesting and useful thing to have. Oh, yes, there's one more thing I want to say. One more thing. It's diagonal. And that makes our life a billion times easier. If it was a non-diagonal metric, um, the, the mathematics gets very, very, very complicated very quickly. But the fact that it's diagonal means a huge saving in time. Still pretty complicated. But anyway, I'm going to stop there. Stop, 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 stop.